everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report. My name is Scott Cordishi. Glad you could join us today. We're happy to be joined this afternoon by the women's rugby team at Brown University. Before we introduce them to you, let me tell you that today's show is brought to you in part by Elite Physical Therapy, the premier choice for physical therapy in Rhode Island. Elite Physical Therapy is staffed by a team of highly trained and talented physical therapists that specialize in treating back and neck pain, sports injuries, and surgical rehabilitation. <laughs> It's your choice where to go. And right now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show from the Brown Women's Rugby Program, their head coach, Kathy Flores. Kathy, how are you today? Uh, as well as can be expected in what's now the new normal, but great. Well, it's great to see you once again, Coach. I miss seeing you on campus. And uh, <laughs> you brought with you some of your student athletes. Karina Wong, a junior, is with us. Karina, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us, Karina. And we have two student athletes that are, I guess, self-quarantining together. Olivia Duba <laughs> and Marion Sellier, both juniors. Olivia and Marion, how are you? We're doing good, well, yeah. yeah. Glad to have each other. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Um, Coach, as you mentioned, uh, living through this new norm, it's crazy. I don't think any of us foresaw uh, what we were going to have to deal with these past few months. Uh, how have you been dealing with it? Uh, well, um, just like everyone else, you know, uh, staying home when I should, getting out and walking a lot now that the weather's getting much nicer, which is great. I do have a dog and he's much appreciative of that. Um, and I have some friends in the neighborhood, so we kind of check in with each other. But beyond that, not a whole lot. I can relate, Coach. My dog is probably in the best shape of her life because she goes for walks mm -hmm. every day. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Karina, take us through, um, you know, how things went for you. When you found out that the spring seven season was over with, you didn't even get a chance to get it started, uh, but more importantly, school was canceled and you'd have to be remote learning. What, uh, tell us when you found out and what your initial reaction was. Yeah, so I think the Wednesday that the Ivy League kind of made the decision to cancel the spring season was a Wednesday morning where she actually had practice. So Wednesday at 6 a.m., we were out on the field having a great time um, together, which was really special to have for the last day. But then by the end of the day, the season had been canceled. And then by a couple of days later, the whole semester um, had been moved online. So it was definitely an abrupt transition, but um, I'm happy that we were able to practice, you know, to the very end. Sad that the spring season was canceled, but we did get a lot of time um, together out on the field. So that was nice. Olivia, you're from uh, San Ramon, California, which is in the San Francisco, Oakland area, but you elected to stay here in Providence with some of your teammates. Is that right? Um, that was initially the plan, but we ended up coming to New Jersey at a teammate's house. So we're up here, but it's been really nice. She lives on a lake, so we've been able to go on kayak trips. Oh, wow. very good. For some reason, I thought you were all together in Providence, so you're all together in New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. And how is, it, how is everybody down there? Everybody healthy? Everybody doing well? Yeah, pretty good. We've just been going out for runs and kayak trips, the grocery store, and then annoying each other in the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marion, how's it gone for you? Um, you know, I think that's a question that I like to ask a lot of people. How do you, what are you doing to prevent yourself from going crazy, just staying in the house? What are some of the activities? Do you get out and exercise? Do you, uh, are you watching a lot of TV or binge watching some shows? Obviously you just finished school and remote learning, but what are you doing to avoid really going crazy during these times? Yeah, I will say I did luck out because it's very hard to be bored, quarantined with this girl over here. <laughs> Um, we definitely have a lot of fun together. I'm not sure if the other people in the house enjoy it as much as we do, but we definitely keep each other laughing and there's definitely been some good binge watching for mm -hmm. series. Um, we're finishing up our finals basically today and tomorrow, but a lot of the outdoor activity I've probably gone on runs more now than I do during the season. So <laughs> there's that. Well, that's Kathy, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your coach loves to hear that. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> Kathy, you guys were able to get the fall season in, right? 15s, you went six and four, but you didn't get a chance to play your spring season, which I think is, it was three sevens matches and then a 15s exhibition or, or something along those lines. Three tournaments. We were playing three tournaments. So that was probably about uh, four to five matches a tournament. So um, yeah, and a developmental 15. So yes, that, it was uh, pretty heartbreaking. As Karina said, we had practice that morning 
and we knew things were going to be coming down and I kept saying well we should know something by tomorrow and then you know every minute I was finding out different things and then by the end of the day it was like we're done unfortunately. And so how have you been staying in communication with the team? Have you guys been zooming a lot, texting? Uh, what's the line of communication been like if anything at all? Well, we group me a lot, um, or, or when we want to get information out, those things, and we share things on group me. But we, I think we had a couple of Zoom meetings, and they were all kind of voluntary if people wanted to come, because they are in school. So we knew some people would have a class and that type of thing. We did have a Zoom virtual banquet, though, which was really nice to see everyone. And, um, you know, I think, I think everyone made it in one, shape, you know, one way or another, some lying on, a, on their bed just kind of watching or you know, others getting dressed up, but it was, I think it was very fun. And we gave out a few awards. So it was a nice way to sort of end the year, even though it wasn't what we usually do. And last month, I saw the story on brownbears.com. Five of your players were named to the 2019 NIRA Tier 2 team, including yes. Olivia, who's with us. Yes, that's correct. That's a great accomplishment for those five young ladies. Right. And we had very many um, all, all our academic students as well. I think we had nine or 10 that were um, all academic students as well. So that was great too. Coach, the three young ladies that are with us today, these student athletes are all juniors and all part of your first true recruiting class since rugby, women's rugby was made a varsity sport at Brown. So that has to be special for you, knowing that these throwing, uh, three young ladies were part of your first ever recruiting class. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And I try not to think about it because that means next year they'll be seniors and they'll be gone. <laughs> but um, yes, I, I think it's it's quite exciting. I'm glad Karina was available so that we could have all three of them on. Um, they're very special. I think that um, your first class is always going to be something that you're always going to think about. And I think that they're good mentors to not only the walk-ons, but uh, the following recruiting classes that are coming in, kind of letting them know the kind of lay of the line, so to speak. Karina, what's your experience been like being a part of this program? You made an impact right away as a freshman. You won an Ivy League championship as a freshman in 15s. You were selected to the Ivy Rugby Conference Sevens teams as a sophomore. And of course, just completed, well, I guess half of your junior year. But what's the whole personal experience been like for you being a member of this team? Yeah, being a member of this team has been, it consumes a lot of your day, but it's really been the highlight of my day um, every day at Brown. So I think it really actually contributes to my academic experience. Um, if I didn't have this team to keep me going outside of the classroom, being in different classes with teammates, I feel like I wouldn't have the same motivation that I do. So as much as I enjoy the sport, I also feel like it benefits me in ways outside of um, the athletic area. Olivia, same question to you. As I mentioned, you were an NIRA Tier 2 team honoree, academic All-Ivy. What's it been like for you these past couple of years? Um, I mean, obviously, like Karina said, rugby is like the most wonderful sport in the world. <laughs> and the athletic side of it has been like really helpful in my experience, but also just the team, like on the field and off the field. That's my friend group, like by choice. <laughs> and by like just being together all the time. But I think even if I had the choice, I would choose to spend all my time with these people because they're just great teammates and great friends. Marion, same question to you. Uh, you were injured this season, were you not? So you didn't get a chance to play. Was it tough for you to, to sit out and not play? Uh, it, it really was. And I was really excited for sevens too, because that was going to be the comeback season. We were all really amped up to play with each other. But you know, if I had to be injured on any team, I think I would choose this one because the support system, they still make you feel like you're part of the team. Um, coming off of back to back, like I had a shoulder surgery my freshman year and then sophomore year had ACL surgery. So um, it's definitely been not what I thought my college experience would be like, but I still wouldn't trade the people for anything. It's a rough sport. I do know that. Coach, you can speak to that as well. Uh, in fact, you were head coach of the U.S. Women's National Team for uh, eight, nine years uh, from 2002 to 2010. And you're a member of the U.S. Rugby Hall of Fame. So you've been with this sport for a long time, haven't you, Coach? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been, I've been with it for a long time. And, you know, uh, it's hard because I think as a player, when you've been involved that long, you always want to play. I think every coach always just wants to play, and maybe that's why they go into coaching you know, but I'm very lucky to be working with such talented players. So, you know, I really don't get a chance to run around as much because they do everything on the field. Karina, what do you miss most about being on campus, being at Brown? 
I'm actually still in Providence, so I kind of get that campus feel, which is nice, but having an empty campus is kind of the downside of that. I definitely miss the people, the professors, the students, and my fellow teammates um, that make the Brown experience really what it is. Will you be heading back to Ottawa this summer or will we be staying in Providence? I'm going to be staying in Providence. Um, study, starting next week, I'm going to be volunteering with the free clinic at their um, COVID testing site. So continuing with that through the summer um, as long as it's needed and then doing different things, hopefully getting back into some research or different volunteer positions I had during the school year. Oh, congratulations and thank you for doing that. What is your concentration at Brown? I'm concentrating in biology um, with a focus in biotechnology and physiology. Olivia, uh, same question to you. What is your concentration and, and what are your summer plans? Um, I'm concentrating in environmental science with focus in sustainability and policy. And I'm actually heading back to Providence for the summer too. I'm working on a farm in downtown Providence called City Farm. It's just like an urban farm. So I'm going to learn a lot about that and I'm really excited. So I'll see you soon, Karina. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, and same question to you. Concentration, summer plans. Um, I'm concentrating in political science with a focus on American politics. And this summer, I'll be interning with the Department of Homeland Security in Newark, New Jersey. Wow. But, um, Newark. Yeah, so Newark's been hit pretty hard, as a lot of big East Coast cities have. Um, so we're still waiting to hear if the internship's going to be remote or not. But if it is remote, I will also be heading back to Providence. So <laughs> see <everybody there. laughs> Get the whole gang together back. Yeah, in I'm telling you. How has, I know you, you ladies have just wrapped up exams, so your academic year is over with. Um, how did you all find the whole remote learning experience? Obviously not the same as being in the classroom. Karina, let's start with you. I am definitely a social studier, so I love going to the library with a big group of friends, my teammates, or different classmates, so it's definitely been an adjustment um, doing that studying on my own, but I've been doing virtual study sessions and the lectures and professors have really been accommodating um, to this remote learning style. Olivia, what about you? Did you enjoy the remote learning or would you much rather be in the classroom with your fellow classmates? Yeah, I agree. I am not very productive unless I'm at the library. So not having that space for studying has really been tough. And I enjoy seeing other people and learning <laughs> with them instead of on my own. But you know, we got through it. It was fine. Not preferred, but we made it. <laughs> you know, Marion, um, I have two kids, one son that's in high school, a daughter in eighth grade, and I'm actually surprised at how well it went because this is really a first for everyone. Um, so while everybody, I think, would prefer to be in their classroom with their fellow classmates, uh, it seemed like the whole remote learning thing at the high school level, at the college level, it seemed to go well. Would you agree? Yeah, I think given that this is not a situation you can ever prepare for, um, everyone's been remarkably adaptable and made things work out the best that they can. Um, all of my classes are small discussion group seminars, so the dynamic is obviously very shifted when you have to move onto a virtual setting, but um, all in all, I think it ran as smoothly as it could have. Coach Flores, uh, the NCAA just extended the recruiting dead period, I believe, to the end of June. So this is kind of a crazy time in terms of recruiting and, and things of that nature. So how have you kind of adapted to these new times in terms of recruiting? Well, we've had quite a few Zoom conversations with, uh, you know, um, recruits that are of age that we're allowed to be speaking with. Um, and actually probably have had more contact with some people than I have during the year because we're busy practicing and competing and everything else and trying to get around. So it's actually been good because we're communicating either online or, you know, through email and that type of stuff. So it's, it's not been a bad experience, actually. In, in your sport, women's rugby, is there a lot of film of young ladies, high school film from you, for you to watch? Well, there's more and more. You know, as rugby becomes more and more kind of structured for young women, because there's lots of boys teams and a lot of times the boys teams will start and then they try to get a girls team going. And I think also that rugby has become an NCAA sport now uh, and people are starting to recognize that they might be able to get into college, you know, because they play rugby. It, yeah, I have people sending me video a lot. <laughs> Olivia, uh, coach uh, told me an interesting tidbit about you. You were actually a place kicker for your high school football team, were you not? Yeah, I was. 
that's how I got into rugby, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, tell me what that whole experience was like. It was really cool. My football coach in high school, they needed a kicker, and he was also the PE teacher, and he liked me and knew that I was athletic, I guess. <laughs> and he was like, do you want to give this a shot? So I said, sure. And it was the best experience in the world. I started my sophomore year of high school and did it through – and one of my teammates, his dad was the coach of the local women's rugby team. And he was really interested in getting me out to play. So I went to a few practices and loved it immediately. But my mom was really, really not keen on the <laughs> idea at all. She was like, you're already playing, you're already playing football, soccer, track. You can't do this too. Um, but me and the coach made a little PowerPoint presentation of all the reasons why rugby would be good for me. And finally she cracked and she loves it now, even though she watches through her fingers. Yeah. What, was, what was your experience as a kicker? Did you play the sport of soccer? I mean, what was it that, uh, that they saw in you that said, hey, you could be a good place kicker for our high school football team? Yeah, I played soccer growing up my entire life. And I, I was in my, the PE teachers, I was in his class. And he would always give us the option of like playing the sport or just like walking around the track. And I was one of the only girls who would always play the sport and I went hard. So I think he saw that I had drive and I liked sports and he thought it was a good idea. So, Coach, you know, it, it, talking about football and rugby, you know, the, the, the subject of concussions has been a big subject in terms of football, particularly at the professional level. And the one thing I say about rugby, and you correct me if I'm wrong, because you've forgotten more about the sport than I'll ever know. <laughs> And, and that is this. Um, I feel like in rugby, because there is not that protection on the head, they don't have helmets, that I think human beings know there are limitations, right? So they're not going to go in there with their head down at full speed and crash into one another because they know that that's really going to hurt. So does that help maybe prevent more concussions in your sport than you otherwise might have? For instance, in the sport of football, when you put on that equipment, sometimes you feel invincible. Right. I, I think that when we have concussions, often it's brand new walk-on players who, who have not had the experience of playing rugby. And I'd say that a lot of our concussions don't come from actually hitting people. They uh, come from people getting tackled and not holding their head up, you know. So we, we do try to pay a lot of attention to tackling and the safety aspect of it, but also the very technique aspect of it. I mean, boys grow up kind of more boys. I won't say all, all boys, but more boys grow up playing physically and tackling each other and knocking each other down. And a lot of young women don't grow up in that way. Now, like Olivia said, or Juba said, she goes all out, you know, and we do have people that do go all out of, of which this crew is right here in front of you. Uh, but, you know, it, it's the other players that want to experience this sport, but they just need to learn how to take care of themselves in the contact more as opposed to, as you say, watching their heads and those types of things. But then sometimes you want to make sure you don't turn your head completely away. Then you don't know what you're getting into. Karina, uh, 15s or 7s, what's your preference and why? <laughs> I would definitely have to say the game of sevens, but the 15 season here at Brown. So the 15 season, we have preseason right before, so we're able to be together as a team for two weeks and just dedicate ourselves to the sport. But sevens is a really fun game to play. There's only seven people on the field, um, and you just get a lot more running, passing, and it's just a lot more fast-paced of a game. Olivia, Marion, same question to you. Yeah, I have to go with sevens as well. You just get to do everything more. It's more involved. As long as you're in shape, it's more fun. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm in shape, shape, sevens, hands down. <laughs> oh, that's unfair, Scott. You asked a bunch of backs if they prefer to play 15s or sevens. <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. My bad. <laughs> So, um, you know, Coach, right now, uh, you know, I think we're all proceeding as if we're going to return in the fall. At least that's our hope. But there's so much uncertainty, I think, still in the air. Is that what you're doing right now? Are you, are you preparing yep. as if it'll be business as usual in the fall? And then if, if it's not, you'll adjust on the fly? Uh, that's correct. That's exactly what Because I feel like if we're throwing it out there that we're going forward, that it might happen. You know, so um, we're just business as usual, getting ready for it, thinking about what we're going to do in the fall, thinking about getting people back. And, and even if we do come back, we don't know if we'll come back early. So, you know, just trying to just plan it all ahead. And then, as you say, make adjustments along the way. 
All right, I want to hear from the three student athletes. Are there any great shows that we should be binge watching during this time when we have a lot of extra time to kill? <laughs> Who wants I to? I mean, think? you have to mention Tiger King, but I think most of the population yes. has watched it yeah. straight yes. through already. So I don't know if that's groundbreaking news. Um, My kids are watching Outer Banks. Uh, I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't seen that either. Yeah. They're trying to get their dad to watch it too. I guess <laughs> I probably will. I'll, I'll probably relent and, and do it. Well, look, um, I want to thank you all for joining us and, and certainly wish you all the best of luck. Uh, Karina, Olivia, Marion, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you back, hopefully on campus in the fall. And Coach Flores, thank you to you as well for joining us. And uh, everybody be safe. Thank, thank you, Scott. You too. Thanks for having us. All right, yeah. that's Kathy Flores, the head coach of the Brown Women's Rugby Program, along with student-athletes Karina Wong, Olivia Duba, and Marion Sellier. That'll do it for this edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report. My name is Scott Cordishi. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.